Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Today in the show, we'll talk about a question we commonly get at this time of year. It's how much more nitrogen does my crop need and how can I put that nitrogen on? Well, one other question that we get real commonly this time of year is insect control, especially in crops like alfalfa. Oftentimes we see perennial crops getting hit first with insects in the spring. We'll talk about how to stop insects in alfalfa today. We've got an iron talk coming up later in the show and a weed of the week as well. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. The corn we planted early February, you have all good emergence. So far, we can't find any condition that the wheels haven't worked, I can just say that. Closing the seed trench behind the planter is essential to establishing yields in the fall. Introducing the Germinator Closing Wheel from Farm Shop MFG. Designed and built by a farmer who is tired of seeing poor stands because of uneven emergence, the Germinator is here to give your crop the strong start it needs for maximum yield. For more information, visit us at farmshopmfg.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about the carbon to nitrogen ratio and what that means exactly out in fields. Well, a lot of times when you're looking at a field like this particular field had corn in it in the previous crop, you see lots of residue out there and we get questions. What does it take for that residue to break down? We have to think about what this residue is comprised of. It has about a 60 to 1 ratio of carbon to nitrogen in corn stalks. Now, if we had wheat straw, it could be 80 to one carbon to nitrogen. And the higher that carbon number gets, the more difficult it is to get those stalks to break down. Yep, so I've got this high carbon residue in my hand, the, this corn stalk here. It's probably going to take a while to break down and what's going to break it down is bacteria. Now, if I say bacteria to you, do you think positively or negatively? Well, usually people just generally think bacteria, oh, that's bad. No, bacteria in this case is fantastic. And for farmers, we look at it as we have trillions and trillions of free laborers out in our field. Well, they're not quite free because what they're going to do in the short term, they're trying to get sugar out of any residue that's out there. If they don't have enough sugar, they're gonna look at nitrogen. And so they're gonna actually use nitrogen as food in the short term because there just isn't the right carbon to nitrogen ratio. The right ratio is about 16 to one, 16 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. When that ratio is higher, like Darren said, 60 to one, with corn stalks quite commonly, we're gonna see some actual tie up of nitrogen. So for example, if we spread 100 pounds of nitrogen out here, there will right now only be maybe 60 or 80 pounds available for the crop. When we think about how we can speed this residue breakdown up, the other thing that could be done is tillage. And in essence, you're really adding some nitrogen to the equation and adding a lot more bugs to the equation too. Because as you're chopping up that residue and spinning up even a small amount of soil, you're also bringing up the nitrogen that that soil contains. So now you've got some more food and you have some more bacteria breaking down the residue. So the carbon to nitrogen thing isn't something that's super commonly talked about throughout much of agriculture, but it's a really big deal for farmers who have corn, who have small grain. Whenever you've got these high carbon plants after the season, going into the next season, you gotta take a look at, hey, if I've gotta have a lot of nitrogen for my next crop, that means I'm gonna to have to apply at least a little bit more because in the short term, some of that nitrogen is going to get tied up. Eventually it'll come back, but it might be a year or two or three years before that nitrogen comes back into the system. And farmers love it when they can break that residue down a little bit quicker because there are nutrients in the residue that can feed next year's crop and help it compete against our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? Where we have run the soil warrior, we have harvested the best corn we have ever harvested in the history of Renwood Farms. Now, I'm kind of always wanting to push the envelope to see what else I can do to help enhance that emergence. Their ride is so much smoother. Their seed placement is even better. Where we had our best emergence and we've had our best yields was where we ran the soil warrior. You have one goal, 
providing the perfect flow of grain from the field to the bend. Case IH axial flow combines are engineered for matched capacity to deliver proven grain savings so you can keep efficiency flowing smoothly. Find yours with the Case IH axial flow. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Increase your productivity with Hypro's dual React control system. The dual nozzle body design allows you to drive at the speed you want while maintaining the rate and droplet size you need. Hypro, helping you spray better. Is nitrogen holding you back from higher yields? Well, you need to find out right now, and when we think about applications later in the season, there are some good ways to determine, starting with pre-side dress nitrate tests. Yeah, so this is just one of the things that we would absolutely encourage you to do. Yes, you can do tissue sampling, and yes, you can do your soil sampling before the start of the year, and all that stuff is great. But what we really like is a soil test at this time of year. We call it a pre-side dress nitrate test. It's very inexpensive. A lot of labs are only gonna charge you five bucks. But we would like you to do this down at least to 12 inches, maybe even to 24 inches. The reason why you wanna do it is because you need to find out not just what's in your plant today, but what's going to be there over the course of the next couple, three months. If you have enough nitrogen to make it to the end of the season, that's fantastic. You don't have to put more on, but if you look at your test and you go, oh, I do not have a lot of pounds here based on what my yield expectation is, then you know you have a much better chance of having a good return on investment when you put more nitrogen on. If you find out that you are a little short of nitrogen, there are many different methods to put that nitrogen on and lots of different nitrogen sources that you may choose from. The big thing is you want to minimize any loss. If you're going to invest the money in nitrogen, you want to make sure as much of that as possible gets into your crop. Yeah, but the good news here is, you know, a lot of people will talk about, hey, a stabilizer is super worth it if you're putting it on in the fall or if you're putting on a high rate in the spring. But right in the middle of the season, the stabilizer may not pay as well because the odds are pretty high that as soon as you put that nitrogen on, it's going to get used up. Now the one stabilizer I might consider if it was me is something that's going to prevent volatility. In other words, if I put the nitrogen on the surface of the soil and I don't get rain, I don't rain it in sometime very soon with urea, it's a couple days with liquid 28%, about a week or so. If I'm not going to do that, throwing a stabilizer with it could make a whole lot of sense. Now, Darren mentioned there are a lot of different forms of nitrogen. We commonly will talk about the liquid, like 28 or 32 percent. We'll talk urea or some form of dry. And then also there is anhydrous that you could run out there. Now, you could do some foliar feeding too. It's just when you're foliar, you can't put a lot over the top of the crop liquid. So we'll probably talk about right now putting higher rates right on the soil. Well, certainly figuring out the rate is going to be important and then the timing as well when you're looking at i want to have good availability throughout the rest of the season how long will that pre hold out that's kind of what that pre side dress nitrate test is telling you that's why we feel that's really critical so you can see where you're at right now and if you figure out you know i've got another week or two that i could hold this off and i could still make it through the crop that might be good, especially in lighter soils that can only hold so much nitrogen. We often use uh, 10 times the cation exchange capacity for that soil as a rule for how much nitrogen you can hold at any one time. Like Brian said, if you've got an actively growing crop, you may be able to push it just a little past that, especially if you're in that rapid growth stage. 
but still, you can time out that nitrogen application and know when you actually need it by doing those tests. All right, getting back to the forms of nitrogen you can use, I would say I'm not real big on anhydrous at side dress time. I worry a lot about burning roots. I worry a lot about burning plants. Obviously, there's the safety factor in applying it, and quite frankly, a lot of retailers have stopped carrying anhydrous just because the insurance costs are so high. So usually, we're talking about the other two forms. It's urea or liquid like 28 or 32 percent. With urea, my concern, a lot of people will top dress. They'll throw it over the top of the crop. I don't love that because sometimes you can get a lot in the whirl, especially if it's wet. So if you're going to throw urea over the top, do it when the plant is very dry, then usually the urea will run off or at least more of it will, will go off of the plant. But you always have that concern about how much ends up in the whirl. I don't like that, so we don't put urea on ours. What we will do is we'll put liquid out there. Yes, we've done it where we inject it. We've injected it with coulters, shovels, a lot of different ways. But anymore, and especially to get it over, to get over the field quickly, we'll typically drag hoses, we'll use a wide drop or something like that. So in terms of that placement, where we have done a Y drop type system, it could be something else too. But the point is, if we can get it closer to the row, you got to think about how the crops roots grow. That corn plant has more roots near the surface of the soil, usually in or right next to the row, not in the middle of the row. So ideally, if I'm going to lay something on the surface of the soil, I'd like it a little bit closer to the plant rather than in the middle of the row. Nitrogen may be a yield limiting factor in your fields right now. That's why we encourage you to do some pre-side dress nitrate tests. They're very inexpensive soil tests to run. You can also confirm it with plant tissue analysis and then get the right form of nitrogen out there at the right rate as well. It doesn't seem to matter if you're short or long on nitrogen. It seems like we're always fighting our weed of the week. We'll talk about how to control this tough weed coming up later in the show. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy, all the way down to the last drop. Agroliquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. Introducing the all-new Diamant Cornhead from Capello USA. With a revolutionary design highly innovative for its class, we have painstakingly designed every component down to the smallest detail to maximize your harvest efficiency. This gives you unprecedented standards in operation and performance. To get a hands-on look at this beast featuring our new gray poly design, join us at the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky, February 12th through the 15th. Capello, wherever you are, we are. Find love and then give it all away. Find love then give it all away. Make sure your farm equipment is season ready with an uptime inspection from your Titan Machinery service professionals. Titan Machinery's team of Case IH certified technicians has the knowledge and experience to find, correct, and prevent mechanical issues that could shut you down during the season. Your planting and harvest windows are short. For genuine Case IH parts and service, schedule an off-season uptime inspection at Titan Machinery today. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer. How much does your crop residue cost you? Over time, residue accumulates in your fields, building excess carbon levels and tying up your plant available nitrogen. Residue also traps P, K, and micros and can take years to naturally become available to your crops. This is because soil lacks the diverse microbial life needed to break it all down. With Decom, you can naturally restore life to your soil and allow the release of valuable crop fertility. Learn more about Decomp at eggbio.solutions. Depending on where you're at this year, alfalfa may be one of the more valuable crops that you have. However, that value can be quickly degraded by an insect outbreak. We'll talk about some alfalfa insects today. Well, first of all, let's talk about scouting. I don't care what crop it is, we just really encourage you, please, 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 
do more scouting. It's one of the funny things as we're talking to a lot of the really high yield farmers and we often will ask them, okay, what are you doing and what, what are your secrets and everything else? Invariably, almost everybody says, well, I'm just out in the field a lot. Spend more time in the field and scout, especially if you're gonna be making another trip out there for something else, weed control, foliar feeding, spraying a fungicide, whatever it is, you can throw insecticide in with almost anything else. When you're going to go out and scout, use a sweep net. By using a sweep net, you can find some of these little insects. You just sweep back and forth a few times and then take a look inside that net and see what you've got for bugs. Very simple and easy way to scout. That's something Darren and I will do quite commonly too, whether it's wheat or soybeans or like we're talking about today, alfalfa, it's using a sweep net. Unfortunately, Brian, one of the things that I see from too many growers that I've met over the years that is that their scouting is, well, I'm looking across the field and you know what? I kind of see a gray looking haze. That doesn't look right. Well, what it is, is oftentimes alfalfa weevil larvae just devastating the crop. You don't want to wait until it gets to that point because you've really lost a good share of primarily your first cutting with that particular insect, but it could be any cutting during the season with one of the insects we'll talk about today. With alfalfa weevil larvae, I get a lot of questions about that, a lot of calls, and people just right away say, hey, I've got alfalfa weevil. And I go, wait a second, do you have the weevil, that's the adult stage, or do you have the larvae, that's the worm stage, the young stage, and the worms are much easier to control. When you've got the actual weevil out there, they have a hard coat, it's really difficult to get them stopped, Absolutely, you're gonna need the full rate of any insecticide to use, and even then, it might not be perfect control. But those worms, they're easy to stop. The whole thing is you've gotta scout, and then you gotta spray timely. So stopping those bugs in alfalfa requires you to get really good coverage. It might take a few more gallons than you normally would use, especially if that crop has a little bit of size to it. You may be upping the gallons per acre to 15 or 20 gallons per acre trying to get good coverage. You may also want to use a little bit smaller droplet and more pressure to try and push it down in through that canopy because like Brian had mentioned, these are small little worms. You want to get good coverage. That's the best way to stop them. Now for me, Personally, I don't worry that much about coverage with a lot of insecticides because the bugs move around. It's whole different than disease, for example, where you spray a fungicide and the fungicide won't move in the plant and the disease can cover the entire plant. It's just, I don't know, I just, I don't worry as much about coverage as Darren probably does, but the key thing is just spraying timely. If you can spray a little bit earlier, you're much ahead. The smaller the bug, typically the easier it is to control. Another kind of pest that we see early in the season in alfalfa is aphids. And there's a number of different aphid species that you may find out there. So if you want to, you can get out and try and identify which particular aphid it is. I don't really care which aphid it is. I just want to get them stopped in my field because they're piercing and sucking insects. They're going to take the juice and the nutrition out of those leaves. I don't want them out in my field and you can have multiple generations. So we want to get in front of them. However, one of the challenges that has happened over the last decade or so is we're seeing less reliable control from the pyrethroids, which are the most commonly used class of insecticides in alfalfa. Well, I don't know if I would agree with Darren on that one either, because I would just say, I've never seen fantastic control out of pyrethroids on aphids. I don't care if it was 20 years ago or it was today, you have to use the full rate of your pyrethroid. Otherwise, you're just not gonna expect great control. Now, you can switch over to chlorpyrifos or Lorsban. That will give you typically a little better control. It's just when you throw Lorsban together with certain herbicides or fungicides, now you're gonna see a little bit more leaf burn. And you will definitely see a little more leaf burn when you put that Lorsban with foliar fertilizer. We do also talk about some newer chemistry like Safina and Transform that are labeled in certain crops. Make sure you check the labels to see if they're specifically labeled for other crops you may grow on your farm like alfalfa. And the problem with Safina and Transform, they aren't gonna control much other than aphids. So if you've got, let's say grasshoppers or potato leaf hoppers, I mean, some other insect that's going to attack your alfalfa, you're probably going to need either that chlorpyrifos, Lorsban, or you're going to need one of the pyrethroids. Well, you mentioned leafhoppers, and that's another insect that we see a lot of scouting from the road. Hey, I see some yellow out there in certain areas of my alfalfa. Must have some hopper burn from some leafhoppers out there. Again, 
do your scouting on a regular basis in your alfalfa crop and don't wait for the next cutting. That's a common mistake that I hear. Well, you know, we're only a couple weeks away from the next cutting. That'll probably wipe them out. No, don't give up. Go after them now. Use insecticides and check what the pre-harvest intervals are to make sure that you're okay. And if you've got that window of 7 to 14 days before you're going to cut and harvest, get the bugs wiped out. That way your regrowth on that next crop will be so much faster. Well, once again, we would really encourage you on a very regular basis in your alfalfa, or for that matter, any crop you've got, get out in the field, use a sweep net, do some scouting, identify the insects. If you don't know what bug it is, talk to your local agronomist or extension agent. And then if you do have insects, the good news here is it's very inexpensive to spray. Usually the pyrethroids are gonna cost two bucks. If you get to uh, chlorpyrifos, it's around four bucks. And even if you had to use, let's say, Safina or Transform, if you ever decide to use that in the future, you're talking around $6 an acre. So fairly inexpensive to control insects and these products are pretty effective on most every bug out there. Well, controlling bugs is one thing, but stopping our weed of the week is another. We'll show you how to do it coming up next. The weed of the week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, agriculture division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher with unrivaled weed control, reduced drift, and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the week is world milkweed. Now, this is not all the milkweeds of the world. This is <laughs> specifically one species of milkweed called world milkweed. And we get a lot of questions about milkweed, especially from butterfly enthusiasts who are concerned about monarch butterflies. Well, there are only certain types of milkweed that the monarch actually likes. Well, monarchs do like world milkweeds, but Darren, I hate to say this, but nobody else likes world milkweed and I'll tell you why. It's very poisonous. So if let's say you have it out in a pasture or something like that, it can be lethal. It can be deadly to your livestock out there. This is a weed we absolutely want to control. Now, if you want to have it around your house and just keep in mind, if dogs, cats, anything else eat it, you eat it, uh, that's not good for you. It's really, really bad. It is toxic. So be super careful with world milkweed if you have it. Now, this is a perennial weed. It's much thinner than the common milkweed that we usually will talk about, but it's still really tough to control. I mean, it is a perennial. Well, out in pastures or grassy areas, we see a lot of farmers choosing Tordon. That, that's one product that can get down into that root system and take a perennial weed out. In crop ground, oftentimes we're turning to Roundup for this, but it's a challenge because this weed has no hairs on it, so it's really smooth and the yeah. product just runs right off. Of. Yeah, so you want to have a low water volume, a high use rate, and then it works quite well. So we would just encourage you, use Roundup out in crop fields before the crop comes up, if the crop, of course, isn't tolerant to Roundup. Otherwise, we would tell you, spray after the season. Again, this is a perennial weed. If we can stop it once, now we're in good shape. That's all the time we have for this week's Weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. Fine. And give it all away Find love And give it all away 
challenging field conditions often make harvest difficult. Can your corn head handle it? The GTS X10 corn head from Agra US is a rugged, cost-effective alternative to heavier, more traditional heads. Constructed of durable yet lightweight aluminum, the X10 puts less strain on your combine without losing harvest effectiveness. And it is 40% lighter than traditional heads, reducing field compaction in those less than ideal conditions. For more information, give us a call at 8334-AGRA US. It's no secret that Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate with your schedule. Field conditions in recent years kept many from timely planting and fertilizing. And when you can't get your fertilizer applied, you lose thousands of dollars in yield potential. If you need flexibility in your fertility application timing, you need a drop tube system from CNR Supply. CNR drop tubes allow you to apply liquid nitrogen in season and place it exactly where your crop needs it. To learn more about low-cost CNR drop tube solutions, visit crsupply.com. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy, all the way down to the last drop. Agroliquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. At Harvest, you have one goal, finding the perfect flow of grain from the field to the bend. Case IH Axial Flow Combines are engineered for matched capacity to deliver proven grain savings so you can keep efficiency flowing smoothly. Find yours with the Case IH Axial Flow. Are you spraying fungicides this year? Is your sprayer set up to properly achieve the best performance from your fungicide applications? In today's Iron Talk, I'll show you three small changes that can make a big difference for you. First of all, with fungicides, you have to understand how they work in order to set up your sprayer to optimize their performance. There are two transport systems in the plants called the xylem and the phloem. The xylem can only move things upward in the plant. The phloem moves things like nutrients and water both up and down in the plant. Fungicides, once they're in the plant, only move in the xylem. One other important consideration is that fungicides can only protect the leaves and plant parts that are out at the time of application and that you get adequate spray coverage on. Most sprayers I look at across the country are set up perfectly for spraying Roundup. For fungicides though, you need to make three important changes. With fungicides, first of all, you need more spray volume than something like Roundup. 15 or 20 gallons is ideal because your crop is up and has some size to it. Now you need volume to cover these plants. Secondly, you need the correct spray tips to make smaller droplets to get the best coverage. Flat fans work well, but I like the Guardian Air Twin Nozzles or the Hypro 3D Nozzles for consistently sized smaller to medium droplets and better coverage, especially in cornfields and with wheat flag leaves and heads. Use the free Ag PhD Spray Tips app to help you pick the best nozzle for the specific fungicide and spray conditions on your farm. Finally, your spray pressure should be fairly high to get penetration down through the crop canopy and to coat the plants. Spraying a fungicide is a lot different than spraying straight Roundup. We aren't nearly as worried about drift, and we need to have excellent coverage to get the job done. Use the right spray nozzles with more water volume per acre and a higher spray pressure to protect your crop. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. That's all the time we have for our show today, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. We're on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.